Destination Mark. Hey guys, how's it going? Marcelo here, and Happy New Year. When I'm not memeing myself after obtaining easy platinum relics in Crash 4, I'm thinking about how thanks to this game, we now have even more cool mass characters in the series. However, as far back as when I was a little kid, I've personally always been interested in the two that have been around since the OG trilogy, Aku Aku and Uka Uka. Their origins are mysterious, their epic past has only ever been touched on just the tiniest bit, and even though in the end good always triumphs, except for when it doesn't, the two have always seemed to be evenly matched. But let's humor the thought for a second that eventually, in a hypothetical scenario, the brothers had to have one final confrontation, winner takes all. Only one can survive this fight, and the other will lose for good this time. Who would come out on top? While the two masks have been shown to be quite powerful, and demonstrate many different abilities throughout the years, so combing through all the different powers Aku and Uka have used will be a definite challenge. And just how are we going to score their abilities? While this video was inspired by Food Theory's Cooling Man episode, which utilized the Marvel Power Grid, so after looking around for similar superhero power grids and coming up empty, I guess we'll have to do the same. They may not be Marvel characters, but I think you'll be surprised at just how good this grid works on video game characters and what conclusions we can come to regarding these two masks and their ultimate fight. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the Marvel Power Grid, the different games these guys have appeared in, and start categorizing. Who would win this last epic showdown and prove they're the most powerful? Let's find out. First up, let's measure the mask's strength. I'll be judging their points for all these categories off of what we can very clearly see and witness in the games. Now because they're... masks, Aku and Uka don't have physical bodies, but they have been shown multiple times to get around this fact in different ways. As it stands, however, when it's just their mask bodies, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. Aku Aku's been shown to be strong enough to prevent Crash from getting sucked into a portal and entranced, despite being unable to escape a regular old cage in Titans, and Uka Uka's used an ice body to throw snowballs at Crash that are roughly Crash-sized into insanity, but he doesn't have the strength to escape the warp orb at the end of Crash 3, or the black hole suction in the good ending to Crash Bash. In addition, Uka couldn't break out of his mojo sepping restraints in Mind Over Mutant, and he couldn't even escape his temple prison until the debris from Cortex's space station destroyed it in the beginning of Crash 3. Though whether Aku's method of trapping him there included some kind of ceiling magic or him just dropping the temple on him remains unknown. But out of sheer physical strength, when we see them go up against each other, they're usually evenly matched, and both have been shown to either pull or throw twice their own body weight, again seeing as they're just literally masks, so each of them get a 3 on the board for strength. Next, let's talk about their intelligence. The brothers have the ability to sense each other and other characters. This is made very clear in Crash of the Titans. A tremor in the mojo. The last time I felt it, it was in the presence of my older brother, Aku Aku. I can sense Coco, so I'll get us as close as possible. But while Aku makes no mention of sensing people using the magic of Mojo, Uka does, as we just heard. Meaning Aku may be able to use his ability more naturally, while Uka needs extra power to tap into it. However, the brothers have also been shown to hastily rush into a fight and get their asses whooped, as we can see into insanity. Meaning once in the blue moon, even Aku is shown to act first and think later. But when Aku uses his own energy, he knows his limits and is more wise with using his powers. Guga, on the other hand, will push himself until his body is drained, and we have none other than Crash 4 to thank for being able to see that. Now we can kind of overlook this, for now anyway, because this particular decision for this category took years of calculating and preparation. We've never seen Uka Uka do something this big with his abilities before. In addition, while he can sense danger, Aku Aku's never actually come up with a plan of attack to gain an advantage over the villains, and this has even been shown to get him captured with the aforementioned cage. While in the same game, Uka Uka's been shown on screen coming up with plans like replacing Cortex with Nina, and in the original Crash 4, plotting to release the elementals from their slumber. So even though both can be hard-headed sometimes, though Uka Uka more so, Uka's calculative and manipulative nature may just be enough to directly combat Aku's wisdom, placing Uka at 4 on the intelligence board and Aku at 3. Now let's discuss energy projection. This one's going to be one of the more creative categories. Both masks have used multiple energy types for various reasons. 
Aku and Uka have both taken over different characters for invincibility purposes, Aku with Crash and Coco, and Uka with Cortex and Nina, and Aku's been able to possess Titan's bodies for Crash to use, while Uka's taken over Cortex's body to assert his dominance in Crash 3. They seem even in the possession category, but we'll circle back around to that in a bit. Now when it comes to actual energy powers, oh boy, Aku's used telekinetic energy rings to rescue Crash and Entranced, he's created an energy shield around Crash to protect him in Titans, he's radiated enough energy to be able to temporarily glow in the dark in Crash 1, and Uguuk has been shown to shoot energy blasts in Wrath of Cortex and Titans, use energy to form his ice body in Twin Sanity, and open up a quantum rift in Crash 4. And most famously, the two have shot colorful energy blasts at each other that are hot to the touch in their Crash 3 fight. And again, these attacks seem to be evenly matched. However, going back to possession, Aku Aku has been shown only once to be able to possess even Uka himself. And again, we have to judge these powers for what we can visually see in the games, and we never see Uka do the same. So this, coupled with the fact that Aku seems to have more energy-based abilities in his arsenal than his brother, puts this category in Aku Aku's favor 7 to 6. Speed's up next, and this one won't take very long. I'll just say it now, they're both even with a 2. Anything higher than that on the grid is going over 700 miles per hour, and in the games we can see that Aku can keep up with Coco while she's riding on Pura, and Tiger Cubs can run at about 20 to 30 miles per hour. And in Crash 3, both brothers end up forming a tornado at one point, which in real life can only form at minimum from winds traveling 40 miles per hour. So for speed, they can pretty much keep up with each other. As for fighting skills, we can safely say both brothers are experienced at a 4. We've never seen them as humans, so not much is known about how they were able to fight back then, even if Aku did hold out long enough to imprison Uka in their last big battle. But once more, in Crash 3, which is the only time we see them directly go head to head like this, they seem to be of equal strength and fighting ability, despite Aku saying in Titans that he's fought evil for many centuries. And now for the last category, the one that will finally determine our definitive winner, durability. In terms of gameplay, their durability is quite the same. They can take hits, but can come back through other masks. And when you look at some of Crash's moves in Titans, yeah, Aku can definitely take some hits. Now, in terms of story and cutscenes, Aku can take many hits without weakening like in Wrath of Cortex, and when both he and Uka get paralyzed by the evil twins in Twin Sanity, they recuperate pretty quickly. Also, if you want to dive a bit further, Aku Aku seems to be basically resistant to extreme cold or heat, and after spending three years in the Arctic with Cortex, Uka Uka eventually became frozen. But here comes the clincher. While Uka Uka hasn't directly taken any on-screen hits before, he opens a quantum rift in Crash 4. And this is where this action can't go overlooked. Crash 4 has effectively shown us that these characters do in fact have a limit. It shows they can wear down from overusage of their powers. Uka Uka opens the rift and is promptly knocked out cold until the end of the game. Aku Aku, on the other hand, is never shown to push himself too hard. The most we can surmise he ever has is in Titans with the constant teleporting. By the time he and Crash get to the top of the Duminator, he says that's as far as he can take them. But that's what makes Aku different from Uka. Aku by nature is a good-hearted person, and while he can sometimes slip up as well, even he isn't perfect, he knows his limits and tries to stay within them. While Uka, an abhorrent, greedy person by nature, will do anything necessary to get what he wants, even if it means putting himself at risk. This results in Aku Aku winning out the overall power grid levels with a 7 for durability, while Uka Uka gets a 6. So, if the two got into a fight, a real fight, the true final battle, who would win? Well, even though the two are evenly matched in strength, speed, and fighting ability, Uka Uka's cunning and calculative nature would certainly give him an advantage. Being Aku Aku's sibling and long-standing rival, Aku's emotions can certainly be exploited, and Uka could potentially even cause Aku to not think straight or distract him long enough to devise a plan to catch him off guard and beat him. But in the end, Aku Aku would still be able to hold out long enough, take many hits, and use his various powers and abilities to combat Uka, wear him down enough to a weakened state, and then entrap him once again, ensuring this time that he never escapes. Aku Aku would win. Man, this was a very difficult idea to put together. I don't think I'll be doing any more death battle-esque vids anytime soon. But I hope this entertained you, and made you think a little bit more about these two enigmatic masks and what they can do. 
I mean, even the quantum mass are shown to get tired after using their abilities in more intense ways. Now, could you imagine what Aku and Uka could really do if they were to truly unite and actually be able to combine their powers together? This video was difficult to put together, but it was fun, and I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of this fight in the comments down below. I'm Mark, I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching, and take care.